So Clearwater has won the toss and deferred to the second half. And well, I believe a Collegiate will get the ball. So Clearwater defers to the second half, and the Spartans will receive. So we'll see the Spartans' offense first here tonight. As they'll be moving left to right. Spartans in their road white uniforms. White tops, white helmets with the Spartan on the right side. They're in their blue pants. Well, clear water in their, their home, all Carolina blue. Spartans, or excuse me, Indian cheerleaders and student section decked out in pink for breast, breast cancer awareness month as uh, we are in October now. The 14th day of October. Already midway through October here. So Matthias Reiser Stockham has it teed up for the Indians. He'll be kicking off from the right to the left. As Justin Flowers and Colton Sorley back deep to receive. As we're about ready to get underway here from Clearwater. Here's the kick. It is going to be fielded by Sorley at the 18 yard line. So he breaks out right side. He's got some room at the middle, and there's a flag in on the far side as Sorley takes that to the 33-yard line. We'll wait for the flag here, but I believe it's going to be coming back. So a block in the back, called on a Collegiate, and they'll push their return back inside the 15, actually right out, right at the 15-yard line, and that is where the Spartans will start with the ball. Cody McNerney at quarterback. McNerney puts his hand down. He'll keep it around the right side. Now he'll try to reverse his footing, and his footing goes out from underneath him. And it's going to be no gain on the play. So no gain for McNerney there. Spartans moving left to right here in the first quarter of play. 4A Division II District 5 matchup. McNerney sends Hurani in motion. Here's a screen pass out to Root. Root. Stiff arms the defender and is going to be uh, taken out of bounds near the 20 yard line. And it's going to bring up third down. Third and five for the Spartans. So third and five trips to the right side for McNerney. Twin receivers to the far side. Puts his hand down and he'll throw it. He's got a man that's caught by Hurani. Hurani has some room and taken down across the 35-yard line to the 37-yard line. Pickup of 17 from McNerney to Hurani. So first down for the Spartans. They take it up to the 37-yard line. Went it to Full House backfield for the Spartans. Flowers behind McNerney. McNerney will option out to Flowers. Flowers takes the pitch. And is going to be taken down just across the 40-yard line. A pickup of four on the play for Justin Flowers. Spartans without Sutton Carter tonight. The senior running back, 5'11", 190 pounds. Coach Gear said he is just down for this, this week. He will be back for next week's game at home against Nickerson. McNerney will keep it up the middle now. Falls his blockers across the 45-yard line, close to a first down. Pick up a five on the play for McNerney. Third down and one for the Spartans. Ball at the 46-yard line of Collegiate. Spartans 
Minerni will hand off to Flowers. Flowers is going to be met at the line of scrimmage, taken down in the backfield for a loss of one. So fourth down and two for the Spartans. And they will go for it here. Flowers behind McNerney. Now receiver to the far side. McNerney looks over to the collegiate sideline. He'll try to change it up, but Coach Mike Gear is going to call a timeout. So with 8.53 here to go in the first quarter, collegiate will be facing a fourth down and two after this commercial break. Nationally recognized academics. Student-friendly tuition. Incredible athletics. The amazing campus. Whatever you're looking for in a university, you'll find it here. It's why you belong. It's why you belong at Pittsburgh State University. So Collegiate will be facing fourth down and two from their own 45-yard line, and Cody McNerney will be back to punt it. Now, we have seen the Spartans fake the punt here in, in recent games. They'll be facing fourth and two with 8.53 to go in the first quarter. McNerney standing at the 31-yard line. Snap is good. McNerney will get this one away. It's a low end over end boot, and it's going to go inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line where, it, excuse me, 23-yard line where it is down. So we'll see the Indians offense out here for the first time tonight where they will start at the 23-yard line. Indians offense is led by Colin Ellis, number 33 out there. Here is the handoff to Ellis. Ellis tries to bounce outside. Outside the numbers, drags down the defender. And in on the tackle there, Justin Flowers. Ellis still give him about one yard on the play. And he is moving right to left here in the first quarter of play. Ball on the right hash. Here's the handoff to Ellis. Ellis up the middle. And another pickup of about one. Ellis the ball Third down and seven coming up. for the Indians here on a beautiful night here in Clearwater. Up the middle is Lil, and Lil is going to be stopped, and he's going to be shut down there by Cooper Root. And Lil is slow to get up there as Root laid the hammer down, and they'll bring up fourth down in a Punting chance here for the Indians. They'll punt it away. Back deep to punt it is Caden McCoy, the senior. And Colton Sorley back deep to receive. Sorley standing about the 34-yard line. Here's the punt. It is a high one. And a pretty good one fielded by Sorley at the 34. Sorley... Tries to break out left side now, and he's going to lower his head and be brought down at the collegiate 47 yard line. So Spartans back out on offense after punting away last time. Cody McNerney. We have twin receivers to the far side, Hurani here on the near side, close to the numbers. McNerney will keep it left side into Indian territory, lowers his head for a first down, and we'll see where they mark it. McNerney on the 
They're going to give him the... I believe they're going to give him the first down. First and 10 for the Spartans. Three carries, 15 yards for McNerney, and that one good enough for a first down and inside Clearwater territory. Trips receivers near side. McNerney looks to his right. He'll roll to his right. He'll dump it off. He's got a man. That is DeVore. DeVore is going to be drugged down after a short pickup. Pickup of two on the plate. To DeVore. So McNerney standing at the 45 yard line. He'll send the man in motion. McNerney now runs the option. He's got it. some room across the 30, shifts the field inside the 20, 15, 10, 5, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Spartans. How about that? A 41 yard scamper for Cody McNerney, and the Spartans take the early lead. McNerney will hold it now as Harris is back for the PAT. Harrison. Snap is good. Hold is good, and the kick is good. So 522 here to go in the first quarter. It is Collegiate 7 and Clearwater 0. We'll go ahead and take a quick break and be right back with more high school football on kpreps.com. Quality Structures Incorporated specializes in designing and building complete post-frame buildings. We provide structures built to withstand a 30-pound ground snow load and a 90-mile-per-hour wind shear built to the most stringent codes. Whether you need a garage, agricultural building, commercial facility, or custom-built design, we're your one-stop shop for post-frame buildings. QSI. Everything we do is right on cue. So uh, Collegiate finds the end zone first here with 5.22 to go in the first quarter. 7-0. to zero. The Spartans leading Clearwater on a 41-yard scamper from Cody McNerney, which started to his right, and then he found daylight to his left, and he find, found the end zone after just beating the Clearwater defender back there towards the goal line. So Harris back to kick. Addison Harris has it teed up, and he'll boot this one away. It's high end over end, and it's going to be fielded as he is falling out of bounds by, I believe, Colin Ellis. It was Colin Ellis as he was catching it, fell out of bounds. So the Indians will take over first down on the their own 34-yard line. The Indians didn't get much going on their last drive. Just three yards total. Three carries for three yards. Lills will hand it off and up the middle goes Ellis and Ellis will pick up four. Ellis came in here as the uh, top Indian runner. And we've seen him carry the ball three times already. Under five minutes to go here in the first quarter. As the night sky has, has quickly came. Here's Lills. Lills will hand it off and met in the backfield. It looked like on the carry was number 88, and that Cody Layton. Layton was met right at the line at scrimmage for a, a no gain. So that brings up third down and eight for the Indians. 
Clearwater two and four on the year. Collegiate three and three. Here's Lills will look to pass. He's got a man. It's caught, but taken down right after the reception by Justin Flowers. A pickup of two from Lill to Peterson. And that brings up fourth down. So fourth down and six for the Indians in the back, or second straight punt as Colton Sorley is back inside the 25-yard line waiting for the punt. Under 10 to go on the play clock. Here's the high punt, or high snap is going to go over the punter's head. He'll go back to retrieve, and he is taken down by three Spartans back there inside the 15-yard line. And how about that? John Hurani will stuff him back at the 15-yard line. And the Spartans are right back on the Indians' doorstep. Three thirteen to go in the first quarter, and the Spartans will have it first and ten on the Indian fifteen yard line. McNerney with Flowers in this backfield. They'll send the man in motion. That is sorely. Now McNerney will keep it right side inside the ten, lowers his head and drags the defender down to the eight yard line. Pickup of seven on the play for McNerney. Second and two for the Spartans. McNerney with a back to his left. He's got trips to the far side. Lowers his hand. He'll roll to his left. He can throw on the run. Here comes a blitz. He throws across his body. And caught by Cooper Root in the end zone. Root was on his knees. He catches the ball in the end zone for a Spartan touchdown. A seven-yard pass from Cody McNerney to Cooper Root. And the Spartans will answer after a muffed punt. And Cooper Root records his second reception and his first touchdown. Harris is PAT, splits the uprights. So with 2.29 to go in the first quarter, Collegiate 14 and Clearwater 0. We'll go ahead and take a quick break before we come back with more high school football on kpreps.com. Football season is here, and kpreps.com is your source for Kansas high school football coverage this season. kpreps.com provides full coverage for every team in the state with original news content, team pages, schedules, standings, and state rankings. Be sure to stay connected with kpreps.com through our website, mobile app, and kpreps Twitter feed where you'll find the fastest and most complete list of scores in all of Kansas. And new this year, kpreps revamped website features daily audio content, live video game broadcast, and will expand our coverage for winter and spring sports. Kpreps.com, your source for Kansas high school sports. Welcome back here to Clearwater High School, where the Collegiate Spartans at 14-0, 229 to go in the first quarter. Spartans uh, took advantage of great field position when they had the ball at the 15-yard line, and they punched it in as Ellis will call for a fair catch here at the 30-yard line. And that is where... The Indians will come out and start their drive. Some other scores from around the league. As Bueller up on Andale, 14 to zero. How about that? The Indians are down 14 to zero as they're playing at Bueller. Now that game is early, but uh, it, the Crusaders have been playing really well. Here is the uh, Clearwater offense. They hand off. To Ellis and Ellis is ahead for about three yards on the play. Ellis, four carries, 10 yards. On the other end, it's Cody McNerney, five carries, 64 yards, a touchdown, while also completing four of four passes, 31 yards, and a touchdown. McNerney rushed and threw for over 150 yards last year, or last week, excuse me. 
Here is Lil. He is going to be met in the backfield by Evan Vogelai. Evan Vogelai in there for the quarterback's sack and a loss of four on the play. So under a minute and a half to go in the first quarter, it is collegiate up 14-0. Twins near side. Looks to pass. He's got a man. That is that is Ellis, and Ellis is going to be close to a first down. A pickup of 10 there from Lil to Ellis. So fourth down and one. Coming up for the Indians. And it looks like Lil is going to go back out there. The Indians will more than likely go for it here. A minute and eight seconds remain in the first 12 minutes of play. Indians will send out a man late. That is Taylor Gibbs, and Gibbs will force a Indian timeout as Lil will call a timeout it as the play clock was running low. So a minute and eight seconds to go here in the first quarter. It is collegiate 14 and Clearwater 0. Go ahead and look at some other scores from around AVC, AVCTL Division 4 play as Mulvane's up 14-0 on Ulysses midway through the first quarter. Andover Central and Rose Hill tied at 0 after one quarter. And El Dorado up 14-0 on Circle. While over uh, Wellington and Winfield playing, it is Wellington up 6-0 on the uh, Winfield Vikings. So Wellington looking for their first victory of the year. They're 0-6 right now. As the uh, Indians offense back out, fourth down and one. And here comes a flag as Collegiate jumps and jumping right there was William DeVore. And DeVore is going to give the Indians a first down and closer to midfield as they move up to the 44-yard line. So uh, the break that the Indians needed right there is they will pick up a first down. Lil wait for the snap. He looked to pass. He's got a man, but not looking for the ball right there was Taylor Gibbs, the one that came in late on the play before. So Lil with his first incompletion of the game. And that'll bring up second down. Ball at the 44-yard line. Thanks for tuning in tonight, wherever you may be, on the uh, kpreps.com website. Whether you're a uh, Spartan or an Indian fan, we're glad to have you on here. And what just happened there? About all the linemen moved, but nobody knew what was going on. And there uh, is a penalty called on Clearwater. And I'll push him back. Five yards, and it'll be second down and 15. Collegiate with a, a great showing there of support there on the far side. A little high snap. He will take it, but he is brought down in the backfield by William DeVore. DeVore is the one that just jumped a minute ago. Offsides, and right there he brings down Lil for a loss of three. Fifteen total yards right now for the Indians. We're under half a minute to go now in the opening quarter.
Lil, another high snap, and he is going to be brought down again behind the line of scrimmage. And in there right on that tackle was Nate Egan. A loss of six on that play. And that will do it after 12 minutes of play here in Clearwater. It is Collegiate 14 and Clearwater 0. We'll be right back for the second quarter after this commercial break. Headquartered in Richmond, Kansas, QSI Quality Structures Incorporated specializes in designing and building complete post-frame buildings. We provide structures built to withstand a 30-pound ground snow load and a 90-mile-per-hour wind shear built to the most stringent codes. Whether you need a garage, agricultural building, commercial facility, or custom-built design, we're your one-stop shop for post-frame buildings. QSI. Everything we do is right on cue. So actually, we are not at the end of the first quarter as they put up eight seconds on the clock as Clearwater, I guess, got off a timeout. We were just informed that there after everybody thought it was the end of the first quarter. Instead, a uh, timeout called by Clearwater as they want to punt with the wind. They don't want to punt into the wind and give Collegiate even better field position. Clock operators trying to get eight seconds up on the uh, clock right now. Oh, one second, they'll say. So we thought eight seconds, and it's going to be one second. So this will be the final snap of the first quarter. They're still trying to... Eight seconds now, they're trying to... Trying to correct the play or the clock here. So one second as they get it there, as they start at 10 and, and wound it down to one second. Back to a punt is Corbin Lill inside his own 20. Here's a wobbly snap, and Lill will boot this one away. It's a hand over end punt. It's going to take a, a great bounce as Sorley fields about the 25 yard line. He's got some around the left side across the 40 45 where he is knocked out of bounds. So that will do it for our first quarter of play now. As Sori takes it up to the 45-yard line. And that is where the Spartans will start their drive here after our commercial break. After we played one quarter in Clearwater, you're watching high school football on kpreps.com. Wanco Companies has been a member of the Pittsburgh community since 1983. Now a national freight transportation provider, Wanco serves customers in 26 states by offering transportation, mechanical, and transload services. Whether transporting potatoes from Idaho, replacing rail cars in Iowa, or transloading rock in Alabama, Wanco will never forget their roots because there's no place like home. Wanco supports Pittsburgh community athletics and wishes all area teams the best of luck. And welcome back here to Clearwater for high school football on kpreps.com. We're ready for second quarter of play in Clearwater as the Collegiate Spartans will have it first and 10 at their own 45-yard line. Other scores around the league after one quarter of play. Bueller up 14-7 on Andale. And Mulvane up 14-7 on Ulysses after one quarter. While Wellington also is in front 6-0 to after 12 minutes of play. McNerney here at the 40-yard line. He's having a great game so far. Here's the reverse pass. Flowers will run it. Picks up a block there for McNerney. Inside Indian territory. It's going to be close to a first down. And I believe they're going to give it to him. Pickup of 11 for Flowers on the reverse. And that is good enough for a Spartan first down. Ball inside Clearwater territory at the 44-yard line. As McNerney will have twin receivers far and near side. He'll send sorely in motion. High snap, and McNerney's going to dive on it. And I believe he's going to recover it. And he'll recover it back inside Spartan territory. 
A loss of eight on the high snap. Now bring up second down and 18 coming up. Second and 18 for the Spartans. Minerni sends a man in motion. He'll keep it around left side. Tries to get, break it outside, and here comes a flag. As McNerney is hit, loses the ball, and Clearwater is going to recover, and in there is Grant Huckabee. Huckabee in there on the fumble recovery, and I believe the flag is going to be... We'll see what it's going to be on. As we await our, our call, I believe it's going to be on collegiate... And the uh, Indians will take over the ball. We'll wait for the official call here. You heard it there. First and 10 for the Indians inside Spartan territory at the 49-yard line. So a fumble there by McNerney. And Clearwater will have it. Lil will hand it off, and Ellis is brought down as he tries to get back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a, a loss of one on the play. Is John Egan there for the tackle? So no gain, they'll call it. Indians in a negative yards uh, rushing. Ten carries, negative three yards. Lil standing at his own 46-yard line. He's got two receivers to his left. Here's the snap. Ellis will keep it and it brought down again behind the line of scrimmage. They'll say he got right back to the line of scrimmage, but in there on the tackle is Nate Egan. Loss of one. Connor Omke also in there on the uh, tackle. Under 10 minutes to go in the first half. Collegiate up 14 to 0. Out of Clearwater. Ball right at midfield on the right hash. Mills gets the snap. He'll roll left. And he'll keep it. And he is going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And in there. On the tackle. It looks like Peter Larson on there. And Peter Larson flew up there and brought down Lil for a loss of six on the play. And the Indians will have to punt it away. So great job there by the collegiate defense to step up and force a three and out. Here's the punt. It's going to go out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. On the far side. Ball out at the 28-yard line. And that is where the Spartans will take over. First and 10 with 8.53 to go. In the first half. Spartans 12 plays. And they have... 109 yards of total offense. One rushing, one passing touchdown. McNerney will keep it left side. He's got some room, but he's going to be brought down after a short pickup of four. McNerney pick up a four there and second down and six. Coming up for the Spartans offense. McNerney has trips far side. He'll send Sorley in motion. He'll look to pass to his right. He'll fire it and incomplete in and out of the hands of Colton Sorley. 
And that's McNerney's first incompletion of the game. And that'll bring up third down. Third down and six coming up for the Spartans. Indians fans chanting defense down there. They're trying to force a three and out situation. Full house for McNerney. He'll send a man in motion. That is Sorley. He'll roll out left. He's got some room across the 35, near the 40, lowers his head, and up to the 44 yard line goes McNerney, and a good enough for a first down. Pickup of 12 on the play for Cody McNerney. McNerney with trips to the far side. Twin receivers near side. Look for him to pass here to Cooper Root. He hasn't got to Root very much. Here's a pass is going to be tipped up in the air right there by Journey Shule. And Shule got a hand on it there as Sorley was wide open here on the left side. And he would have had daylight in front of him. Instead, it's going to be second down and 10 at the 44. Justin Flowers will bring on the play for Collegiate. Flowers will be behind him. DeVore to McNerney's left, Sorley to his right. McNerney will call a timeout as the play clock was under five. We'll go ahead and take a break with them. 7.35 to go in the first half. Collegiate 14, Clearwater 0. You're watching high school football on kpreps.com. Football season is here, and kpreps.com is your source for Kansas high school football coverage this season. kpreps.com provides full coverage for every team in the state with original news content, team pages, schedules, standings, and state rankings. Be sure to stay connected with kpreps.com through our website, mobile app, and kpreps Twitter feed where you'll find the fastest and most complete list of scores in all of Kansas. And new this year, kpreps revamped website features daily audio content, live video game broadcast, and we'll expand our coverage for winter and spring sports. Kpreps.com, your source for Kansas high school sports. And welcome back here to Clearwater. 7.35 to go in the first half. It is Wichita Collegiate 14 and Clearwater 0. Spartans will be facing a second down and 10 at the 44-yard line. McNerney with Sorley to his right now. DeVore in motion. Here's the pitch out to Flowers. Flowers. Picks up a block. He's across the 40, across 45, and a short gain of three on the play. The officials talking there on the forward side. We'll see if there was a, I'm not, I didn't see a flag. And they'll stop the clock here with 7-10 play in the first half, and We'll see what happened there. I didn't see a flag. We'll wait for our official call. So uh, not enough men on the line of scrimmage. There is the call. And that will erase the short pick up there for Flowers. Now, uh, three receivers to McNerney's left. He has two to his right. Here comes Sorley in motion across. McNerney rolls out to his left. Now he'll roll back to his right across the 40. And he's going to be taken out of bounds at the 41. A pick up of three on the play. Short 
And I'm going to go third down. Eighty yards on the ground for Cody McNerney. Eight carries, eighty yards, and a rushing touchdown. Ball in the right hash. McNerney back to pass. Two-step drop. He'll look to throw. He's got a man, and Flamini goes diving out of bounds, but can't make the catch. And I'll bring a fourth down for the Spartans' offense. McNerney back to punt it away. He's standing at the Spartan 26-yard line. Snap is high. McNerney goes up and gets it and boots this one away. And over and kick. And it's going to be fair caught by Ellis at the 26-yard line. So the Indians will have it first and 10 at their own 26, 6.49 to go in the first half. McNerney had a 41-yard touchdown a scamper in the, in the first quarter. And then uh, he found Cooper Root for a touchdown. Lil to Mills on the... Reception and pickup of five. And late on the carry, he's not going anywhere. No gain on the play. Third down and seven coming up for the Indians offense. They're moving left to right here in the uh, second quarter. And you know, flag called on, I believe, collegiate there. So encroachment called there on, I believe that was going to be on Nate Egan. Instead of third and about eight or third and seven, it's going to be about third and two coming up here. Lil will hand it off to Ellis. Ellis up the middle. And good enough for a first down. Pick up a three for Colin Ellis. And a first down for the Indians. Ball at the 39-yard line now. And here is a flag going to be called as looks like a false start on the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. That was number 88, Cody Layton in motion. Wasn't set for the second, and that will cost you five yards there. So Lil will go back in the huddle and change out the play. Under five minutes to go in the first half. 14-0 collegiate. Lil will send a man in motion again. He'll keep it up the middle, though. Going to drag defenders across the 35-yard line. 
And they pick up a four, and here comes a late flag. We'll wait for the official call here as the, the flag came in after the play. And so offsetting penalties called there, both personal fouls on the offense and the defense. Not sure who the the two responsible were. Instead, it's going to be a second down and 11. Coming up for Clearwater. Here's the snap. Lil looks to pass. He is met and taken down in the backfield by Peter Larson. Larson's second tackle behind the line of scrimmage tonight. Loss of eight on the play. And it's going to be third down. And about 19 coming up. For the Indians. 3.45 to go in the first half. Here's the snap. A handoff to Ellis. Ellis breaks outside. Still dragging defenders. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds. At the 38-yard line. Pickup of eight on the play. And he's still not in positive yards rushing the ball tonight. 16 carries, negative three yards, and not to punt it away here as it brings up fourth down and 12. Different punter this time for the Indians. And over in, and it's going to take a great bounce for the Indians inside the 15. And it takes a little bounce back, and it will be down at the 15-yard line. So the Spartans will have it first and 10 at their own 15-yard line with 3 minutes and 24 seconds to go in the first half. Last week at practice, they uh, talked about that a lot that Coach Gear did, is you either you, know, you want to catch the ball and, and, and make things happen. Instead, Sorley backs away from it, and it takes a great bounce for the Indians. And now Cleaver's backed up at their own 15-yard line. McNerney will roll out to his left. Being pressured. He'll throw it on the run. He's got a man. He's got Flamini. Flamini just over the arms of Flamini there. And incomplete. McNerney had the arm there. Flamini just a little bit out of the reach of the left hand of Jake Flamini. McNerney now 4 of 8 passing. 31 yards. Sorley to McNerney's left. He's got Flowers behind him and DeVore to his right. McNerney will keep it left side and brought down after a short pickup of one. Third down. Third and nine coming up for the Spartans. Hurani and Flamini to the left side. McNerney rolls out to his left now, rolls out to his right. He's got daylight in front of him. Across at 20, lowers his shoulder and leap for a first down. Pickup of 10 on the play for Cody McNerney. And good enough for a Spartan first down. 
clock rolling. Two minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first half. McNerney with DeVore to his left. He's got Flowers behind him. Twin receivers to the near side. McNerney back to pass. He's being pressured. And he'll throw it on the run. He's got Flamini. Flamini makes the catch. And down at the 40-yard line. A pickup of 13 on the play from McNerney to Flamini. McNerney and company rolling here. Trips to the far side. McNerney rolls to his right. He's got a man. He's got Larson. He throws it and intercepted. And about the 45-yard line right there by Taylor Gibbs. McNerney had Larson wide open. And Gibbs just comes from behind and jumps in front of it and makes the interception. And the Indians will have it first and 10 at their own 48-yard line, but they have a minute and 48 seconds to go 52 yards. Very possible here if you're an Indians fan. Lil will hand it off to Ellis. Ellis dragging defenders across midfield into a Spartan territory. Pick up a four on the play. And finally, the uh, Indians are in positive yardage. 17 carries, one yard. On that carry there from Colin Ellis. He has nine carries for 24 yards. Lil will send Ellis in motion now from his left to his right. He's being pressured. Lil will keep it. Left side, stiff arms. Larson, he's going to be pushed out of bounds. After no gain on the play. It will give him a gain of one. One minute and seven seconds to go here in the first half as Lil was pushed out of bounds and the, the clock stopped. Lil standing inside his own territory. He's being pressured. He escapes it, throws it away, and it is caught right there at the 40 yard line. A pickup of seven. And a first down. Peterson with the catch at the 40 yard line. 60 seconds remain here in the first half. And the Indians are moving the ball. First and 10 on the right hash at the 40. Lil looks to pass left. He throws it in the air. Picked off by... That is Sorley. And Sorley up to the 46-yard line. What a change of momentum there. And a great job by Colton Sorley to read the deflection and pick it off. And the Spartans will have 44 seconds to go 53 yards if they choose to do so. Looks like the Spartans will try to get into the end zone. Trips near side. Flamini, Hurani, and Sorley. McNerney rolls out to his left. He'll fire it. He's got a man. That is Hurani. Hurani inside Indian territory. Pickup of 15 on the play. Pick up a 15 on the play, move the sticks as McNerney rolls out to his right. He'll look to throw, he's still rolling. He'll throw it away, out of bounds. 26 seconds to go in the first half. On our halftime show, we'll go ahead and take a look around the AVCTL Division 4 as there's some great action going on tonight including a good one in Bueller. 
as Bueller's up 21-14 on Andale nearing the end of the first half. McNerney with trips to the right. Now he'll roll out to his right. Got some room. He's got all day. He fires it. It's caught. First and 10, John Hurani. Pick up a 14 on that play. And McNerney will spike it there. 14 seconds to go in the first half. So second and 10 for the Spartans. Ball at the Indian 24-yard line. Larson, Hurani, and Root on the left side. Sorley and Flamini on the right. McNerney alone in the backfield. He'll step back to pass. He'll roll to his right now. He'll still look to throw. Now he'll just tuck it and head out of bounds with six seconds to go. A loss of one on the play. Loss of one, that brings up third down and 11, six seconds to go in the first half. Ball at the 25-yard line. Trips near side, receivers far side as well. McNerney alone in the backfield. He'll put his hand down, he'll fire it. He's got Hurani, or excuse me, Sorley, and a pickup of five yards on the play to Sorley. Sorely with the catch, and Addison Harris will be out for the long field goal. It's going to be a 37-yard attempt here for, for Addison Harris. Snap is good. Hold is good. The boot is up and no good as it soars wide right. So we played 24 minutes of play here in Clearwater. Collegiate 14 in Clearwater 0 after the first half of play. We'll go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll come back with stats and scoring summary on the halftime show you're watching high school football on kpreps.com. Headquartered in Richmond, Kansas, QSI Quality Structures Incorporated specializes in designing and building complete post-frame buildings. We provide structures built to withstand a 30-pound ground snow load and a 90-mile-per-hour wind shear built to the most stringent codes. Whether you need a garage, agricultural building, commercial facility, or custom-built design, we're your one-stop shop for post-frame buildings. QSI. Everything we do is right on cue. And welcome back here to Clearwater High School where it is... 14-0 in favor of the Collegiate Spartans after the first half of play. We'll go ahead and take a look at the halftime stats for you. First for the uh, Spartans, Cody McNerney leading the way. 11 carries, 90 yards, uh, a, a rushing touchdown. Justin Flowers, 3 carried, 14 yards. In total, 14 carries, 104 yards, averaging 7.4 yards per carry. One uh, rushing touchdown, and Cody McNerney did have a fumble. McNerney passing 8 of 13, 78 yards, one touchdown, and one interception, averaging just under 10 yards a throw. Jod Hurani, three, three receptions, 46 yards, while Cooper Root, two receptions, 12 yards. William DeVore, one reception, two yards. Jake Flamini, one catch for 13, and Colton Sorley, one catch for five yards. Is yours. For the Indians, Colin Ellis leading the way, nine carries, 24 yards. Cody Layton, one carry, no yards. And Corbin Lewis, eight carries, negative 22. In total, 18 carries for two yards. Corbin Lewis, four or five passing, 24 yards, one interception. And receiving Cole Peterson, two catches, nine yards. Colin Ellis, one catch for 10 yards. So the 
Spartans got on the board on a 41-yard touchdown run from Cody McNerney. Then on a muffed punt, the Spartans got the ball at the 15-yard line, and that is when Cody McNerney found Cooper Root in the end zone for a touchdown. So there's the two scores so far in tonight's game. And it and totals up 14 points for the Spartans. Another other games around the uh, league. Bueller up 21-14 on Andale and halftime. How about that one? Now over going on and Bueller will keep an eye on that all night. Mulvane up 14-7 on Ulysses at half. And over Central leading Rose Hill 7-0 at half. And then at near halftime in in Tawanda, El Dorado leading Circle 29-8. While Winfield leads Wellington 7-6 after one half a play. So those are the games around the league. And um, go ahead and look at our, our district real quick for you. And uh, this one with Nickerson, Collegiate, Trinity, and Clearwater. Nickerson 4-2 overall. Collegiate and Trinity both 3-3. Three and three, And Clearwater 2-4. and four. So the other game going on tonight is Nickerson and Trinity. And we'll see if we can get you a score on that game real quick. As we um, are watching our halftime show here tonight, the, or the Clearwater marching band with the... Uh, the pink feathers on top of their hats in support of breast cancer awareness. Halftime, uh, Nickerson up 12-0 on Wichita Trinity. And, of course, both teams will be playing these two teams here uh, next week. Collegiate will be hosting, which, or excuse me, Collegiate will be hosting Nickerson on senior night, while Clearwater will be taking on uh, Wichita Trinity. And then in the final week, Collegiate will take on Wichita Trinity and Nickerson will play Clearwater. So it's a good one here so far. 14-0 your score after 24 minutes of play. We'll go ahead and uh, take a quick break here on you watching high school football on kpreps.com. Wanco Companies has been a member of the Pittsburgh community since 1983. Now a national freight transportation provider, Wanco serves customers in 26 states by offering transportation, mechanical, and transload services. Where the transport
And welcome back here before uh, we get ready to start the second half in Clearwater. It is Wichita Collegiate 14 and Clearwater 0 after 24 minutes of play. Go ahead and uh, run by our stats real quick again in case you didn't hear the last time. Collegiate with 22 total plays. Or excuse me. 27 total plays of offense for 182 yards. Clearwater, 23 plays for 26 total yards. So the Spartans are proving why they have the 14-0 lead after the first half. Clearwater will get the ball to start the second half here as the temperature has gone down here on a beautiful night. Wind's starting to pick up, though, a little bit more out there as it's coming from the south at about 15 miles an hour. We are 73 degrees at kickoff. We'll go ahead and uh, see if we can get a, a temperature for you right now. It's definitely starting to cool off a little bit. Spartans will kick it off here to uh, start the second half. Clearwater will receive on your left of your screen. Addison Harris will tee it up for the Spartans. So Harris will kick off from the right to the left. He'll kick it off from the 40. He has it teed up. Back deep to receive for the Indians is Caden McCoy and Kale Mills, both seniors. Back deep to receive on senior night here at Clearwater High School. Here's the high end over in boot, and it's going to be fielded at the 37-yard line by Taylor Gibbs. They'll have a first and 10 here to start the second half. And there's going to be a flag already here. That's not how you want to start the uh, second half with a, a penalty before you've even ran one play. Indians will have it now back at the 32-yard line. First and 10 to start the uh, second half. Here is Lil. He'll keep around the right side and is going to step out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Pickup of... Five on the play by Lil. Here's the snap, and up the middle is Ellis. Ellis lowers his shoulder, drags two collegiate defenders. Ahead for a pickup of nine on the play. That was now 10 carries, 33 yards.
Lil will keep it up the middle. Loads his shoulder. Excuse me, that's Ellis, and Ellis is still on his feet across the 50-yard uh, line into Spartan territory. Pickup of nine for Ellis here, and that's why you don't stop your feet, and he drives ahead for a first down. First and 10 for the Indians at the Spartan 45-yard line. Ellis in wildcat formation again. He'll keep it up the middle. He's got some room across the 40-yard line. Pickup of seven there. So a nice back-to-back -back runs there by Ellis. And we'll see if they keep him in there in this wildcat formation. Second and three coming up for the Indians. Ellis will stay in there. He's got Kale Mills to his right. Ellis. And here's the ball on the ground. And it's going to be recovered by Collegiate. That is number 32, William DeVore in there on the fumble recovery. And how about that? Just when the Indians are starting to drive, it is a race right there by a, on a fumble by Colin Ellis. So we'll see the Spartans offense out there now. They drove the ball well to end the first half before a 37-yard field goal was missed by Addison Harris. McNerney sends the forward and sorely in motion. Here comes McNerney. He's got some tries to bounce outside. Near midfield, still on his feet, 45, close to the 40-yard line where he is brought down. Pickup of 16 on the play. First and 10 for the Spartans. McNerney now over 100 yards on the ground, 12 carries, 106 yards. And he has it first and 10 inside Indian Territory. Here's the handoff to Sorley. Sorley has speed and room around the right side. Pickup of seven on the play. Inside the 35 to the 33. Now full house backfield again. McNerney will send sorely in motion. McNerney keeps the left side. He picks up a block from Flowers. He's lowers his shoulder inside the 30 down to the 25-yard line and move the chains. A pickup of eight and the first down. And as McNerney, last week we saw him pass and run for over 100 yards. And he's starting to use his feet even more. 114 yards on the ground tonight for the junior. First year starter at quarterback for the Spartans. Here goes DeVore in motion. Now McNerney will keep it again. Got some blocks inside the 20, inside the 15, taken down at about the 13-yard line. Another pickup of first down for a first down. Pickup of 12 on the play. And McNerney is just following his blockers, doing a great job of seeing where they are and finding the holes and finding back-to-back -back first downs. First and 10 at the Indian 13. McNerney will spread it out now. Three receivers, far side, two near side. Here comes Sorley in motion. Claps his hand, rolls to the right. McNerney will keep it. He is hit behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of two on the play. Huckabee and Ellis in there on the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. And McNerney is brought down at the 15. 
Second down and 12. For the Spartans offense, trips near side. Here comes Sorley in motion from right to the left. Here's a bubble screen out to Sorley, incomplete off the left hand of Colton Sorley. And now bring a third down. We talked about this in the pregame show, Coach Gear. Last week they got down to the five yard line, couldn't punch it in, and they've had some trouble in the red zone, and hopefully not here. They have it first, or excuse me, third and long at the 15 yard line. Full backfield again. McNerney puts his hand down. He'll roll to his left. Now pass over to Flowers. Flowers has the catch and room. Inside the 10, inside the 5, in the end zone. Touchdown, Spartans. 15-yard reception for from Cody McNerney to Justin Flowers. And Flowers celebrates. And the Spartans have the 20-point lead. 15 yards there from McNerney. To Flowers. And McNerney on a bad snap. He'll roll to his right. He'll just throw it up in the air. He's got root and incomplete in the back of the end zone. So uh, with 7.27 to go here in the third quarter, Collegiate 20 and Clearwater 0. You're watching high school football on uh, kpreps.com. Why should you choose Pittsburgh State University? Nationally recognized academics. Student-friendly tuition. Incredible athletics. The amazing campus. Whatever you're looking for in a university, you'll find it here. It's why you belong. It's why you belong at Pittsburgh State University. And welcome back here as the Spartans take the 20-0 lead on a touchdown pass from Cody McNerney to Justin Flowers. And Flowers had the perfect screen, and he found the end zone after dancing his feet and finds Pater. And on a muff snap, the Spartans don't get the extra point or the two-point conversion, so 7.27 to go in the third quarter. It is 20 to 0. Here's the boot from Harris. And it's going to bounce and back at the 11 yard line after a fair catch is called by a Clearwater player. Number 11, Kale Mills, picks it up and he's wondering why that the ball is dead right there, but the player in front of him did call for a fair catch. So once the first player that touches it is dead. So first and 10 for the Indians back at their own 12 yard line. Cody McNerney, two passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown here tonight. Lil will roll out to his left. He's got some room, and here comes a flag coming in. A pickup of eight on the play. So holding is the call. And we have to distance to the goal and then we'll repeat the down. There and it. Clearwater now back at their own seven yard line. First and 16 now for the Indians. Back against their own end zone. Lil, five seconds on the play clock. He'll pitch it out. And that is, I believe that is Leighton on the carry. Leighton is hit hard. 
Maybe a gain of one there for Leighton. Leighton now two carries for just one yard total. And here's a, a big play, second down in 15. Coming up for the Indians. Lil will roll back to pass. He's being chased around the end zone. He'll throw it away and incomplete. Batted down out there on a great job defensively by Will Sahatian. And it falls incomplete. Third down and 15. Third and long coming up for the Indians offense. Back inside their 10-yard line. 6-19 to go in the third quarter. Here's a snap. The handoff to Ellis. Ellis has some room. Stiff arms the defender. And he takes out to the 15-yard line. A pickup of eight on the play, but that's going to be not enough for a first down, and the Indians will have to punt it. So fourth down and eight coming up for the Indians. They'll be punting deep back in their own territory. As McCoy standing at his own one-yard line. Ready to snap. It's going to be blown dead here as a flag comes in. And the Indians now will be even forced back deeper in their own territory. So instead of just out of the end zone, McCoy punting, he'll be pointing or he'll be punting now back in his own end zone. In the uh, blue end zone that reads Clearwater across. Here's a snap. Collegiate sends a rush. It's a handover in boot. And Sorley catches it at the 36-yard line. Runs into his own defender. And is almost going to be brought down. He shuffles his feet. Still on his feet somehow. And still dancing around. And he's going to go out of bounds. At the... See where they mark it. At the 40-yard 40, 40 line. Andale has tied it up after Tristan Dagenau, or Dagenau, excuse me, ties it up on a 71-yard a run. Clear, or Collegiate's offense right back out here. Sorely in motion. McNerney rolls to his right. He'll keep it across the 40 and taken down at the 39. Gain of one there for McNerney. Pickup of one, 535 to go in the third quarter. Spartans trying to find the end zone again. McNerney will send DeVore in motion. Here's the misdirection handoff. Actually, McNerney will keep it. It was supposed to be a, a handoff to Flowers, and McNerney's not going to go anywhere. And third down coming up for the Spartans. McNerney averaging... About 13 yards a carry. 17 carries, 125 yards. You know, Flowers behind him. DeVore to his right, sorely to his left. Rolls out to his left. He's being pressured. He'll roll back to his right now. He'll tuck it and run. And he's going to go out of bounds at the 37-yard line. We'll give him an extra yard, actually. And pick up of three on the play. And that will bring up fourth down and six 
for the Spartans. Fourth and six at the Indian 36. Trips near side, two receivers far side for McNerney. And how about that? The Clearwater defense jumps, and that's going to give Collegiate five yards, and they'll bring up fourth and two. Good ball. Good on the defense. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. So still fourth down, but fourth and much man more manageable now. Fourth and a, a long yard coming up. McNerney standing at the 35. William DeVore to his right. Colton Surly to his left. Justin Flowers behind him. Here comes DeVore in motion from right to left. A pitch out to Flowers. Flowers looks to throw. He's got a man wide open. Jake Flamini inside the 10. And here comes the penalty marker. A trickery play from the Collegiate Spartans. And Justin Flowers had Flamini wide open. And here comes the penalty marker after... A uh, pass interference call on the Indians' defense. So back-to-back -back penalties hurt the Indians here after they had a collegiate at fourth and long. And now it's first down and 10 at the Clearwater 16-yard line. Ball spotted at the Indians' 16-yard line, first and 10 Spartans. McNerney rolls out to his left. He's got Sherman inside the 20, inside the 15, inside the 10, 5. Touchdown, Spartans. But there is a flag back at the 20-yard line. So just when McNerney walked into the end zone, he turned around and saw a penalty marker on the play. Instead of a 16-yard touchdown run, it's going to be a first down and long. First down at 24 coming up. Ball at the 30. They need to get to the about the 6-yard line. So first and 23 coming up. McNerney. Puts his right hand down. He'll roll out to his left. He'll look to throw. He fires it. He's got a man. Flamini catches it and then drops it. And it's incomplete. And almost a great catch here by Jake Flamini. But how about that defense there by Clearwater's, Clearwater's number 11, Kale Mills, on, on the defense. Second down and 23 coming up. Flowers and Larson coming in to replace Flamini. Larson and Sorley to the right. Hurani down here to the left on the numbers. McNerney back to pass. He rolls to his right. Still looking to throw. He fires it. In the coverage and in and out of the hands of Cooper Root. That would have been close to a first down, and Root can't come down with it. Cooper Root had would have been close to a first down. And now third down and long. Third and 23 coming up for the Spartans. Ball at the 30-yard line. McNerney steps back to pass. He's pressured. He'll throw it. He's got a man, an incomplete, thrown just wide of Jake Flamini. And that'll bring up fourth down. McNerney's pass again incomplete to the receiver, Flamini. In for the Indians, so fourth down now and 23. Down for the See what the coach Mike Gear has up his sleeves here. Fourth and long. Trips to the near side. Root at the hash. He's got 
Hurani, and then Larson to his left. Sorley and Flamini up to his right. Here comes McNerney. He's running inside the 20, inside the 15, inside close to the 10-yard line and short of a first down. A pickup of 20 when he needed 23. So instead of punting it and more than likely going in the end zone, the Spartans decide to just have McNerney run up the middle. He picks up 20. It was close to a first down, but instead it's going to be first and 10 for the Indians. Ball at their own 10. And here's a short run there by Ellis. And Ellis isn't going to get any there. Pick up of none on the play. 3.15 to go in the third quarter. Lil standing at the five-yard line. He'll fake the pitch. He's going to be hit hard behind the line of scrimmage. In there was Grant Dieter. Third down and long. Inside their own 10-yard line. Third and 11, back at the nine-yard line. Here's the balls on the ground, picked up in the end zone, touchdown Spartans. How about that? Nate Egan, the right person at the right time, picks it up and scoop and score for three yards out for Nate Egan. So 2-10 to go in third quarter, 26 to 0 is the score. Harris on for the PAT. McNerney the holder. Snap is good, hold is good. The uh, kick is through the uprights. So 2.10 to go here in the third quarter. It is Collegiate 27, Clearwater 0. You're watching high school football on kpreps.com. Football season is here, and kpreps.com is your source for Kansas high school football coverage this season. kpreps.com provides full coverage for every team in the state with original news content, team pages, schedules, standings, and state rankings. Be sure to stay connected with kpreps.com through our website, mobile app, and kpreps Twitter feed where you'll find the fastest and most complete list of scores in all of Kansas. And new this year, kpreps revamped website features daily audio content, live video game broadcast, and will expand our coverage for winter and spring sports. Kpreps.com, your source for Kansas high school sports. And welcome back here to Clearwater where it is all collegiate. They're up 27-0 with 2-10 to go in the third quarter. Another district play, the actually the same district that these two teams are in. Nickerson up 26-0 on Wichita Trinity. So that's going to be a big one next weekend at Wichita Collegiate between the Spartans and the Nickerson Panthers. Here comes Ellis on the return. He's going to be hit and brought down at the 33-yard line. So after a scoop and score by Egan, Spartans are up 27-0, and the Indians offense is right back out there on the field. Mulvane up 28-14 on Ulysses. And over Central, up 7-0 on Rose Hill after three quarters. Wellington and Winfield are tied 14-14 after three quarters. The Crusaders of Wellington looking for their first win of the year. And here up the middle, across the stick for a first down near midfield. 
pick up a 15 there for Mills. And he is near midfield, ball to 48. Here's the fake pitch and brought down behind uh, by Grant Dieter. Dieter, great job there by reading the eyes of Corbin Lill. And Lill goes behind and loses about four yards on the play. Second down at the 44-yard line for the Indians. Lil standing at the 39-yard line. He'll step back to pass. Almost intercepted off the fingertips there of Peter Larson. Third down and long now. Third and 14 coming up for the Indians at their own 44-yard line. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Lil breaks the huddle. Who comes out there. We got twin receivers to the far side. A single receiver near side. Sends Ellis in motion. Lil back to pass. Two steps. He'll fire it. And caught by Ellis. Ellis still on his feet inside the 30 20. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Kale or excuse me, Clearwater. 56 yards from Lil to Ellis. And there is a flag down. But the referee is now picking up and and going down the field. Not sure what is going on there. So roughing the passer called on a collegiate. And the 15 yards will be assessed on the ensuing kickoff. Ellis has been a workhorse all night. And he finds the end zone there on a touchdown reception. The PAT is up and no good. So with 40 seconds to go in the third quarter, it is Collegiate 27 and Clearwater 0. You're watching high school football on kpreps.com. Headquartered in Richmond, Kansas, QSI Quality Structures Incorporated specializes in designing and building complete post frame buildings. We provide structures built to withstand a 30 pound ground snow load and a 90 mile per hour wind shear built to the most stringent codes. Whether you need a garage, agricultural building, commercial facility, or custom built design, we're your one stop shop for post frame buildings. QSI. Everything we do is right on cue. And welcome back here to Clearwater as the Indians get on the board on a 56-yard hookup from Corbin Lill to uh, Colin Ellis. Fifteen yards off of the Roughing the passer penalty on Collegiate. Now Clearwater will kick off in Spartan territory. At the 45-yard line, they will kick it. 15 yards up from the original spot. Nickerson up 26-0 after three quarters against Wichita Trinity. Matthias Reiser Stockham. We'll kick the onside kick here. And it's going to be fielded by Collegiate. And they will take over at the 33-yard line. On the uh, 
Recovery there is Zane Essa. 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. 27 6 to score. McNerney sends Sorley in, in motion. He'll pass out to Sorley. Sorley's got the catch. Picks up a block from Rue. He's got some room across the 40, 45. Drag down at the 46-yard line. A pickup of 12 on the play. Here is Flowers. He's got some room across midfield. Still dragging defenders and brought down at the 45-yard line of Clearwater. Pickup of nine on the play for Justin Flowers. And that will do it after three quarters of play. It is Wichita Collegiate 27 and Clearwater 6. We'll be right back with the fourth quarter. You're watching high school football on kpreps.com. Wanco Companies has been a member of the Pittsburgh community since 1983. Now a national freight transportation provider, Wanco serves customers in 26 states by offering transportation, mechanical, and transload services. Whether transporting potatoes from Idaho, replacing rail cars in Iowa, or transloading rock in Alabama, Wanco will never forget their roots because there's no place like home. Wanco supports Pittsburgh community athletics and wishes all area teams the best of luck. <laughs> And welcome back here for the fourth quarter of play, which will begin in just a minute. You're watching uh, high school football on kpreps.com. The Collegiate Spartans will be back in action next Friday night. It will be senior night at Spartan Stadium in Wichita as the Spartans will welcome the uh, Nickerson Panthers to town. And Nickerson looks like they'll be coming in with a 5-2 record if they're up 26-0 on Wichita Trinity after three quarters so a good one should be on tap next Friday night make sure to come out and watch the game or watch it right here on kpreps.com we'll have the game for you McNerney will keep it up the middle lowers his shoulder bounces off a tackler and picks up the first down still fighting for extra yards Pickup of seven there. And a McNerney now 20 carries, 155 yards. One rushing touchdown and one fumble. He also has thrown for two touchdowns. Here's the handoff to Flowers. Flowers up the middle, still on his feet. Picks up a first down and more. Pickup of 11 on the play for Justin Flowers. And the first down. Flower five carries, 34 yards. 11-25 and ticking. Here in the fourth quarter of play in Clearwater. Here goes Sorley in motion. Option play, pitched out to Flowers. Flowers reverses room and picks up a short gain. Pick up a four on the play. And the Spartans are right back on the Indians' doorstep after Clearwater had a deep strike from Lil to Ellis for a 56-yard touchdown pass and run. McNerney, once again, sorely in motion. McNerney will keep it on a misdirection. Inside the 10, inside the 5. Touchdown, Spartans, but there is a flag on the play. This could be the second time that McNerney has rushed for a touchdown. It's going to be brought back. And once again, 
a holding call is going to erase a Cody McNerney touchdown. So instead of a Spartan touchdown, it's going to be second down. Ball back at the 34-yard line. Well, second and 17. McNerney flowers behind up. Sorely to his right, DeVore to his left. Puts his hand down, he'll look to throw. Pump fake, he throws it wide open to Hurani. Hurani out of bounds. Pickup of nine on the play. Actually, he'll give it ten. Hurani, four catches now. For 58 yards. And third down and much more manageable. Third and seven. Coming up for the Spartans. McNerney will roll right. Here comes a rush. And he is going to throw it. And incomplete. And here comes the penalty flag. And I believe it's going to be intentional grounding. We'll see. We'll double check here, but it looks like it will be intentional grounding there. And that's going to be a loss of down on the play, so it will be fourth down. Intentional grounding on the offense. Five yard penalty. Loss of down. Fourth down. So fourth down coming up for the Spartans. Two penalties on this drive have killed the Spartans. They had a touchdown on a McNerney run that is called back for a holding now intentional grounding, and that brings up fourth down and about 16. McNerney. Hand down, it looks to pass. Three-step drop, pumped fake. Now he is going to dump it off to Cooper Root. Root is going to try to misdirection there, and he's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play from McNerney to Root. And it'll be a turnover on downs, and the Indians will take over. First and 10 from their own 33. Lil, waiting in shotgun formation for the snap. Here's the handoff. Up the middle to Mills. Mills, pick up a three. Pick up a four on the play. Second down and seven. Coming up under... Ten minutes to go, 9.35 to go in the fourth quarter. Class 4A2 division and is district number five. Here's a handoff. And trying to shoot the ball out is Cooper Root. And a carry there by Layton. And Layton's going to pick up maybe one on the play. We'll give it two for Cody Layton. Spartans defense has been in check tonight. They've allowed just 118 yards total. 38 on the ground, 80 through the air. So the uh, Clearwater team averaging nearly 375 yards total offense a game. Lil rolling out to his right. He's got some room. Going to pick up the first down and more. Pickup of seven for uh, Lil and a first down. Up 
Clearwater ball at their own 46. Moving right to left here in the fourth quarter. Trailing by 21. Ellis with the carry. Pushed off a defender into a Spartan territory. Pickup of seven on the play. Ellis now 63 yards on the ground. Second and three coming up for the Indians. Will looks behind him at the play clock. He'll now keep it up the middle, picks up the first down, and that is all he's going to get, a pickup of four on the play. First down for the Indians. Lil looks to pass. He'll fire it out here to Ellis. Incomplete. As Ellis had some room there if it was a nice ball. Instead, incomplete. And that brings up second down and 10. Mulvain takes down Ulysses 28 to 14. Here it's 27 to 6 in favor of the Collegiate Spartans. They're seven minutes away to improving to a 4 and 3 on the year. Lil will hand off to Ellis. Ellis spins off the defender, still on his feet. Pickup of seven for Colin Ellis. Ellis again on the carry for the Indians. Ellis, 70 rushing yards tonight. He also has a 56-yard touchdown reception. Little steps back to pass. One drop. He throws it. Intercepted by Colton Sorley at the 25. Sorley still on his feet at the 40 45. Taken down at the 47. And Colton Sorley with the uh, interception. Pass, Second Barney. interception thrown tonight by Corbin Lill. Gibson, Huckabee, and Spartans had it first and 10 at their own 47. McNerney with Flowers to his right. He's got Devor to his excuse me, Devore to his right. Here's the handoff to Flowers. Flowers stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Pickup of two on the play. Wind still coming in tonight from the south. McNerney sends a sorely in motion. He'll roll out to his left. He'll run it, tuck it, and run it inside the 45. Loses the ball at the 40-yard line. Pickup of 10 for McNerney and then fumbles it. His second fumble of the night. And just as Clearwater hands it over to Collegiate, the Spartans hand it right back to the Indians. Five forty-three to go in this game. Twenty-seven-six, your score. Love 
Lil will try to keep it, and he is going to be brought down after a short pickup. Pickup of two on the play. Lil still in negative yards. 13 carries, negative eight yards. He has been shut down all night. 517 to go in county. Twin receivers near side. Ellis to Lil's left. Here's the handoff to Ellis. Ellis tries to bounce outside. Picks up a block and taken down after a short game by Colin Egan. Pickup of seven on the play for Ellis. Third down and three. Indians moving right to left here in the fourth quarter. And how about this? Bueller takes down un previously unbeaten Andale 28 to 21. A huge win for the Crusaders to start off district play. And here Lil with the carry, no gain on the play. Indians have, have been really good this year. And they fall at Bueller 28-21, open up district play. And how about that, folks? A big win for the Crusaders. Crusaders were beaten here or beaten by the Spartans earlier in the year. And, of course, Collegial lost last week to Ando at Ando in a, in a tough one. But a big win there for Bueller. Lil's just back to pass. He's got a man. And a catch first and ten after the pickup. Pickup of nine on the plate for from Lil to Peterson. Clearwater picks up a big fourth down conversion there. They have it at the 48-yard line. Here comes a flag in. We'll see what the call is. So penalty there on the Clearwater offense, pushing them back five yards. First and 15 coming up. Clock winding. About three minutes to go. Lil waiting for the snap. He'll drop back to pass. He'll throw it. And what a catch there. Pickup of seven there to Peterson. Peterson was hit right when he caught the ball. Second down and eight now. Lil will keep it, roll out left. Now he tries to find some room, and he is hit hard by number 32 in there, William DeVore. No gain on the play there for, for Lil. Third down and 10 coming up. Ball at the 48-yard line. A minute 40 to go from a uh, Spartan victory. Lil back to pass. He's got a man and a catch. And there is Taylor Gibbs. Pickup of eight on the play. 
from Lil to Gibbs. We'll go ahead and uh, take a quick timeout after the uh, Indians call timeout. You're, you're watching High School Football on kpreps.com. Headquartered in Richmond, Kansas, QSI Quality Structures Incorporated specializes in designing and building complete post frame buildings. We provide structures built to withstand a 30 pound ground snow load and a 90 mile per hour wind shear built to the most stringent codes. Whether you need a garage, agricultural building, commercial facility, or custom built design, we're your one stop shop for post frame buildings. QSI. Everything we do is right on cue. And welcome back here to Clearwater where it is 27 to 6. Collegiate on top with 1 minute and 24 seconds to go. Clearwater offense still trying to get something going. It's fourth down and two coming up for him. On the uh, Spartan 44-yard line. Snap, and here comes a flag in. And we'll see who this is on. And another penalty called there on Clearwater. And pushing them back. It's going to be fourth down and seven instead of a fourth and a manageable two. Thank you. Referee has to put the game clock back at 124. Just one second compared to where it was. Ball at the Spartan 49-yard line. Ellis in motion. Lil sends him back behind. Lil looks to pass. He's hit hard as he throws. Incomplete. Nice pressure there by Peter Larson from the edge. Minute 21 to go. So Spartans take over, and they'll go ahead. And Cody McNerney will take a kneel down. So a minute 12 to go. Spartans will improve to a 4-3 and three on the year, 1-0 and oh in district play. Clearwater fall, will fall to 2-5 and five on the year, 0-1 oh in district. McNerney will wait until the play clock hits about one, and then he'll snap it and take another kneel down. Make sure to stick with us after the game. We'll go ahead and finalize our stats and uh, get you the scoring summary and preview next week's matchup. 30 seconds to go. One more kneel down will have to come from the Spartans. They are that one kneel down away. From a 1-0 start in district. And there goes that final snap. And McNerney will kneel down. 10 seconds and counting. And that will do it from Clearwater. Collegiate 27 and a Clearwater 6. A big win for the uh, Spartans to bounce back with a, a win after losing last week. And they, they start off district play 1-0. and So a big win here tonight for the Spartans. We'll go ahead and take a quick break. We'll come back to wrap it up from Clearwater High School. Headquartered in Richmond, Kansas, QSI Quality Structures Incorporated specializes in designing and building complete post frame buildings. We provide structures built to withstand a 30 pound ground snow load and a 90 mile per hour wind shear built to the most stringent codes. Whether you need a garage, agricultural building, commercial facility, or custom built design, we're your one stop shop for post frame buildings. QSI. 
Everything we do is right on cue. And welcome back here to uh, Clearwater High School as the Collegiate Spartans improve to 4-3 and three on the year, 1-0 and oh in Class 4A Division 2, District Number 5. While uh, Clearwater falls to 2-5 uh, and five on the year, 0-1 oh in district play. Go ahead and uh, do a quick rundown of our numbers tonight. First for the visiting Spartans. Cody McNerney, 21 carries, 165 yards, one rushing touchdown, two fumbles. Justin Flowers, seven carries, 40 yards. And Colton Sorley, one carry for seven yards. In total, 29 attempts, 212 yards rushing, averaging just over seven yards a carry, one touchdown. Cody McNerney, 12 of 21 passing, 118 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Receiving, big night for John Hurani, four catches, 58 yards. Followed by Cooper Root, three catches, 12 yards, a touchdown. And then Colton Sorley, two catches for 18 yards. Justin Flowers, one catch, 15 yards for a touchdown. Jake Flamini, one catch, 13 yards. And William DeVore, one catch for two yards for the Indians. Colin Ellis, 17 carries for 77 yards. Had one fumble. Corbin Lill, 15 carries, negative 12 yards. Mills, two carries for 19 yards. And Cody Layton, three carries for three yards. Total, 35 carries, 68 yards. Averaging just under two yards a carry. Corbin Lill passing, eight of 13, 104 yards. One touchdown and two interceptions. Cole, P Cole Peterson, four receptions for 26 yards. Colin Ellis, two receptions for 66 yards. Taylor Gibbs, one reception for eight yards. And Cale Mills, one catch for four yards. So a big night there for, for the Spartans. They didn't get much you know, offense going, but uh, Cody McNerney, once again, a big night passing and throwing the ball, both over 100 yards, 165 rushing, 118 passing. And it all turns out to be a Spartan victory as they win this one here tonight, 27-6. We'll go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll come back to wrap up our scoring and then preview next week's matchup against Nickerson. So we'll go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more high school football on kpreps.com. Football season is here, and kpreps.com is your source for Kansas high school football coverage this season. kpreps.com provides full coverage for every team in the state with original news content, team pages, schedules, standings, and state rankings. Be sure to stay connected with kpreps.com through our website, mobile app, and kpreps Twitter feed where you'll find the fastest and most complete list of scores in all of Kansas. And new this year, kpreps revamped website features daily audio content, live video game broadcast, and will expand our coverage for winter and spring sports. KPreps.com, your source for Kansas high school sports. And welcome back here. Welcome back here to uh, Clearwater High School, where the Collegiate Spartans come away uh, victorious 27 to 6, the final. And uh, a big night there for Cody McNerney, passing and throwing, or passing and running for over 100 yards each, as the uh, Spartans improved to 4 and 3 on the year. Talked to uh, Coach Mike here before the game. He said that they've had a great week of practice, and uh, he felt like they were going to come out here with a lot of energy. They needed to uh, get some things going, and they did. So we'll go ahead and look at the the scoring for you real quick. As Cody McNerney started things off with a 41-yard run, he started right and then back to his left for, for the 41-yard touchdown run to put the Spartans up 7-zip. Then Cooper Root with the 15-yard reception from McNerney as Root was on his knees in the end zone. He caught it. Flowers, a 15-yard touchdown reception. And then the Indians scored on a 56-yard pass from Lil to Ellis. And then the uh, Spartans got a, a big touchdown on a fumble recovery scoop and score from three yards out by Nate Egan. So that's your scoring as... 
Collegiate wins 27-6 tonight. We'll go ahead and then talk about next week's matchup as the Spartans will host the Nickerson Panthers in a big game next Friday night at Spartan Stadium in Wichita. It's going to be senior night and a, a big game as Nickerson comes in with a 5-2 record as they won tonight. They won big 32-0 over Wichita Trinity. So the, the Panthers coming in after losing uh, last week to Hoisington, 64-8. Panthers come in with a 5-2 record. We'll go ahead and look at their, their schedule real quick as they uh, started the year off 2-0. Winners of uh, Haven and Lions, 57-16 and 39-0 before losing 55-26 against Pratt. And then they got back on the winning side, beating Heston and Larned, 36-27, 36-14 before falling to unbeaten Hoisington last week, 64-8. So the Panthers play in the Central Kansas League with, with schools like Haven, Lions, Pratt, Heston, Larned, Hoisington, Halstead, and, uh, and schools of that such. So so the Panthers will come in with a 5-2 and two record, a, a big win here tonight. And so that's going to set up a, a big showdown next Friday night. Make sure to head out and watch the game at Spartan Stadium or you can catch the game right here on kpreps.com as we will be with the Spartans the remainder of the season. No matter where we go, we will be with the Spartans right here on kpreps.com as we look around the league for other scores real quick as Bueller comes away with a big win to start district play at Andale 28-21. to The uh, Crusaders took down number two Andale. And then Mulvane beat Ulysses 28-14. Andover Central beat Rose Hill 7-6. And congratulations to the Andover Central Jaguars picking up their 100th career or 100th victory in school history. And going on over in Tawanda, El Dorado up big on circle 49-16. And Winfield and Wellington going to overtime. All tied up at 14 apiece. How about that? The Wellington Crusaders still looking for their first victory of the year. They could get that one um, as they're playing Winfield right now. And then, of course, the game in our district, Nickerson 32, Wichita Trinity 0. So that sets up a big game next Friday night under the lights at Spartan Stadium at Wichita Collegiate High School. It should be a good one. So make sure to come out or catch the game right here on kpreps.com. For myself, Sean Boston, and my partner, Jake Heck, we want to wish you a very pleasant Friday night, and we wish you a, uh, a great weekend, and we'll have you right back here on kpreps.com as we'll be calling another Spartan victory as Wichita Collegiate wins tonight, 27-6 at Clearwater. We'll go ahead and uh, end tonight's broadcast, and thanks for watching, and have a good one.